You're listening to the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. The views and opinions expressed on this show do not necessarily represent those of the network, its advertisers, owners, or sponsors. Happy New Year! What's going on? This is the ITV show, and we are still hungover, but it's okay. And Bob's in the red for the first time it's, of the year at the six second. Mark. I thought we were hungover. <laughs> you were quieter. What happened? No, it's 2018. It's time uh, to get things going. We're at episode 228 here in Podcast Detroit. The whole gang's here. Guests tonight include Robin Tino. They have a startup called It's Lit. It's a kind of a cool technology to multi-stream I, social I, live videos. Are we getting, like, we're middle-aged white guys. Are we going to get this? Yes. I, Urban I, Dictionary. Look it up. People say stuff's lit, and I'm like, I, but it's <laughs> what? I don't know. Uh, they'll they'll explain to us. Lit too, so. <laughs> yes. Keep serving the good beer. <laughs> and then we got uh, Jeremiah here, Dr. Hook from Daily Detroit. We're going to do a rundown of the best of 2017. New Year's Eve, downtown Detroit, and what's in store for 2018. Dave, you may fire when ready. You're listening to the Podcast Detroit Network. Visit www.podcastdetroit.com for more information. The following program is intended for mature audiences. I'm Wyatt, that's Gary, you're Bob, and you're Dave. This is the IT and the D Show. This is Max Ma- Ma- Hedrum. And what you're about to witness is one of the most sinister-sounding intros to a trailer to one of the greatest epics ever. <gasps> this is Billy D. Williams. Bob and Dave and I are enjoying a Colt 45 right now. And remember, IT in the D, it works every time. Where do you guys think you are? The Library of Congress? Detroit? Beyond the Sun? Any of those, right? Take him to Detroit. No! No, not Detroit! No! No, please! Anything with that! No! You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Then don't come! Shut up! Hi, this is Christy Swanson, and you're listening to the IT in the D Show. And Bob and Dave touch my hoo-hoos. So what happens when you tap the angry beaver in the bunghole? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Come on. Christ. <laughs> Get the hell with this. I'm calling a break. We'll come back to the IT in the D Show. Uh, this is Gil Foyle from Silicon Valley, and the only two guys I hate more than Dinesh are Bob and Dave. Suck it, guys. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is Billy Zapka. Sweep the leg. Listening to IT and the D Show. No mercy. I may have to wipe the deep off. Hi, this is Kelly LeBrock from Weird Science. So, Bob and Dave, what would you little maniacs like to do first? Are we at a break yet? <laughs> hey, this is Zach McGowan from Planet Earth. You're listening to IT and the D Show. Hi, I'm Ernie Hudson, and you're listening to IT and the D. All you nerds out there. Hey! Nerds. Nerds. Nerds! What is a nerd? I'm a nerd, and uh, I'm pretty proud of it. Hey, Detroit, this is Anthony and Michael Hall. You're listening to my buddies Bob and Dave on IT in the D. This is Scott Stein at Big Pump Pump. The IT in the D show is your hookup. Holler if you hear me. Yeah, you're in your underwear? I'm in my underwear. Hey, let's hang out. No, I'm sorry, honey. I have a headache. I <laughs> definitely want to see Bob in his underwear. That's a fact. Hey, everybody. This is Tony Todd. What's happening? You may know me from Candyman, The Rock, Sushi Girls, Zoom, Night Living Dead, a lot of pop culture media madness. Anyway, you're listening to IT in the D show business. I'm totally into Dave, but not right. so much Bob. This is Robert Hayes, a Ted Stryker to my mother. When I'm not hanging out at the McGumbo Bar, I'm listening to the IT and the D show. It's worse than Detroit. Is there such thing as a meat hangover? I love my Monday meat steak. Hey, folks, this is WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and you're listening to the IT and the D Show. Tough guy. Ho! So, what would you little maniacs like to do first? The question isn't what are we going to do. The question is what aren't we going to do. Ludicrous speed! Sir, had you better buckle up? Now ah, buckle this. Ludicrous speed! Go! Happy New Year. Welcome to 2018. While we are drinking coffee and chewing on Advil, you are listening to the one and only IT and the D Show. We're broadcasting live here. Studio One, Podcast Detroit in beautiful Royal Oak, Michigan. This is Bob the Sales Guy. 
hanging out with the usual crew. Dave the Geek, Nuri the FNGs in the house, Randy, I do the Twitter's walker, is manning the Twitter sphere. Find us online, itinthed.com. Give us a like on all the socials and subscribe to us everywhere. Find podcasts are sold. Hey, so before we dive in, uh, all right, Bob, so when's the last time you checked your credit score? Every time I get denied for a, something I want to buy. <laughs> 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 so because your scores may change more often than you think, and you should know what they are now and not from a year ago. Credit Karma is here to help out. The best thing, Credit Karma is always free, and there's no catch, no credit card needed. Go to creditkarma.com or download the Credit Karma app now. I got to tell you, I use it. I like it. I, I'm checking my credit score about once a week now just to see how things are. I need it. Is it, dude, it's it pretty changes cool. week to week. You, it'll, get, it, like, it'll tell you if there's updates, and sometimes it happens week to week. It's like things wrong. Roll off and things roll on, and so yeah. it will proactively send you updates when something changed. Yeah, it'll. Oh, it's it's like a little app notification that says, "Hey, something changed." I'm like, oh crap! I forgot to pay my bill. All oh, your credit score just dropped a hundred points. Wah, wah. You can't buy a car <laughs> oh, now. You're, like, a, you're a day late. <laughs> right. Enjoy your new house payment. Right, right, right. exactly. <laughs> hey, your interest rate just jumped four points on your house. <laughs> we, yeah. So that's uh no, no. I I need that. And thank you for the reminder, Credit Karma. Um, so yeah, it is. Uh, I like to uh. Oh, but before we get going, mark your calendars. Right. So go, we got a whole bunch. Like, so when the Bob years. and I were sitting down <laughs> laying out our calendar for the year, I'm just going to say it now. Screw all of you. Um, <laughs> because come about June, I'm going to be dead. That's all there is to it. For example, so we've got, let's see what do we got coming up. We got, uh, Saturday. Uh, January 6th, we got free podcast day here at Podcast Detroit. If you ever wanted to try out the studios, got a little form on Podcast Detroit. You fill it out, check it out, come in and hang with our studios, see what the deal is, come play. Uh, then on the 11th, over, so that's next Thursday, over at Selena's, uh, the little sports bar down the street that we spend way too much time at. Uh, we're having one of our podcaster meetups. Come on out, hang, chill, have a couple drinks, chat with people to talk about podcasting and, Properties of podcasting. It's you podcasting know, accessories, maybe. It's demented yeah. and sad, but social. What mic are you guys using? Right. <laughs> Neumann TLM 103. Oh, oh Mr. Big Shot. I prefer the Heil PR 40s. <laughs> And then the following Thursday, the 18th, uh, we'll be over at Falling Down Beer Company for our first IT in the D casual networking socialism. That I there. won't be at, of course. You won't. Yeah, great, Bob. You know, we we buy a brewery and then schedule <laughs> events at the brewery, <laughs> and then you're not there. I can't help Everybody, it. Everybody, welcome to my life. Tuesday, I can't <laughs> help it. Tuesday the 9th is the first Ann Arbor meetup. Uh, we'll oh, be I at, totally forgot about that. We'll be at Haymaker Public House right at uh, 4th and Washington. Cool, cool. I will try to be there, Randy, since I'm missing ours. Sweet. You can have them. So, <laughs> so obviously we're back from break. Most of us are a little bit energized. A lot of us, are, like I said, we're drinking coffee and chewing on Advil. One story screamed at me the how scary. So the, what I did was I watched a lot of movies this break. I did not play video games because I knew the onslaught and slew of humanity that would be brought upon me from the middle schoolers All and elementary school kids. Well, yeah. and you can only say, kid, I'm going to buy your house and bang your mom so many times. It's, it was funny the first thirteen. No, it was it was funny the first thirteen hundred times right. I did it. Now just old. Um, but I never knew what I know. We it, it's come up once or twice before the term called swatting. Oh, we've talked about swatting. Before. Yeah, it's like a fly yeah. on the wall and you have to like kill it. Or, no, uh, it's when something some, dies. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's a human. It's oh. when someone owes you a dollar fifty on Call of Duty and you don't pay up, and then someone fakes a hostage crisis situation at your house on your home address, and the SWAT team shows up and kill you. Jesus. Yeah. So or this, <laughs> at the very least, burst in your doors with guns drawn. And, like Christmas case, vacation. Yeah. In this case, somebody died. In fact, and, and it wasn't even somebody who was involved in the Call of Duty. It was $1.50. Again, $1.50. Someone so, died over $1.50. So somebody gave a, a fake address, basically, right? So let's say like you and I are whatever. So I decided I'm going to swat you. So I'm going to do what I'm going to do is I'm going to use. Is I'm it because use, I'm getting handsy? Because it get, is. Okay. It might happen. <laughs> so I'm going to use a, a fake app. Uh, I'm going to use a fake number app. I'm going to go ahead and call 911. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to give them your address and say that I've seen uh, armed gunmen in the house. It's a hostage Jesus. situation. Jesus. And SWAT shows up. Jesus Christ. And they're probably not – you know, they're going to probably storm the house. They don't ask questions That's what that No, point. SWAT doesn't right. F around. They, right. No. So this was a, a 28-year-old guy, father of two. Yep. Oh, Who, again, not even involved in the dollar fifty bet. Just, just to make that abundantly clear – you jackhole who set this up. But apparently this is the same individual that called in a fake bomb threat um, at a Dallas event 
earlier this year. So yeah. I mean, earlier in seventeen. So yeah, he, go figure. Someone needs to be uh, put in gulag for yeah. fair like, you know. Look, he has been arrested, right? Oh God, yeah. Okay, good. But let me ask you a question: How do you? I mean, Activision obviously can't take the blame for it, but they got to feel somehow responsible. How do they combat that? What? What? I mean. I mean, you really can't. I mean, you, you have to be, I mean, that really comes down to, I guess, SWAT process and procedure. I mean, you can't not respond to a call like that. You know, right. do you go in? Hi, everybody. You know, no, flash yeah. bangs and guns blazing. <laughs> Maybe not. There's a 12 year old sitting there with this controller. Right. <laughs> yeah. With this Xbox One controller going, <laughs> what? Um, yeah. I, like, I don't, there's not much. Yeah. Like, that headset has been off of my head for at least, what, 12 years now. Dude, Since I told like, you, like, it's been about that long for me, and it was that stupid need for speed, you know, that I hopped online, and I thought I was, like, it was a half hour, and then I walked upstairs, and it had been, like, six hours, so oh. apparently <laughs> it's some time-space distortion crack LSD that gets pumped in through the headset. I don't know. So that's a good thing with Stormfront 2, you get two games and I'm done. Uh, like, I'm at the point in my life for now where I don't need to level up that bad. <laughs> no. I get Do you two- ever get laid? Oh, I really Sorry. like this guy. No. Oh. I have three kids, not anymore. <laughs> you got wedding cake. Okay. Um, but hey, can we, uh, speaking of moments of silence, can we have a moment of silence for everyone in the great state of Oregon? Um, who has to Is start it Oregon or Oregon? Oregon, whatever. They, they Not only do they have dysentery. Oregon. Um, they, have, the they, they have all died of dysentery. They all died of dysentery because they have to start pumping their own gas. Dude, again, I don't know if the comments were trolls or honest. I, I'm pretty sure these – But these, it was yeah, amazing. It was amazing. These are pretty good. Like there was a 62-year-old native Oregonian who says, no thanks. Because she doesn't want to smell like gasoline. And then someone who said that there are hazards of not pumping gasoline correctly. So, yes, there are hazards of pumping gasoline incorrectly. But that's when you start My favorite like, are the people who think they have to take all the passengers out of the vehicle before <laughs> they put gas in it. <laughs> My kids are in the car. I got to take them off. No, the best comment of the whole thing was it's like one of those infomercials late at night for like the pasta Dude, cooker. you have problems pumping right. gas. And it's people like you – know, people making pasta and just shit just goes everywhere and like <laughs> boiling water in their hands. It's like, Can you I, not I feel like this explains the entire city of Portland. <laughs> no, it kind of does. an episode of Portlandia. Exactly. My favorite comment was I've decided to move to Oregon to open up a school to teach people how to yes. pump their own gas. And I will also branch out and offer classes such as tying your own suits, dressing yourself, operating a self-checkout machine. Dialing your own phone, mowing your lawn, wiping your butt. <laughs> and hey, that business model is scalable because New Jersey also can't pump their own gas. And I lived in New York City and that was one of the biggest things for me to get used to was like pulling into New Jersey and having some guy like, hey, yeah. how much gas you want and what Yeah, they're all full serve, yeah. Wow, so there will be a job for Chris Christie. Oh, oh shit. Yes. <laughs> right. We just canceled segment three today. <laughs> <laughs> well, and let's be honest. So the, the relative to the uh, the Oregon people are the people who were just appalled that WhatsApp went down on New Year's Eve and they had to resort to texting and calling their friends. The humanity. <laughs> with, with the money, it went down just about perfectly New Year's Eve India time. And India is the largest consumer of WhatsApp in the world. All my friends in India, all the people who work for my company in India, all of them use WhatsApp. I'm guaranteeing they're like shipping pictures back and forth yeah. and text. And it was almost exactly Hopefully that's not the New only Year's thing Eve that went Eve. down. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> well, for, for New Year's Eve, that was about it for me at least. All right. Uh, how many yeah. bells do we already have right. in 2018? How tied to that? Like, Is you that have broke? To, how tied do you have to be to an app though where like – you lose your mind when you lose it. Dude, Twitter goes like, down, people lose their mind. They do. Facebook they go, goes Facebook down, goes down. down. People, mind. Facebook slows down and people act like yeah. the traffic, you know, going home is like, uh, our snowmageddon. <laughs> it's people. It is. Oh, yeah. We, we did have some snow here. Just uh, a little. We, we should mention that. And, and morons, again, people, people in Michigan, I want you to listen to me for like two seconds. If you're out of the, if you're out of the state, whatever, but people in Michigan, <laughs> it snows every effing year. This is not new. You are not Newton. People are not flocking to the state like they do to California. So you've been through this once before. You know how to effing drive in snow. You do. I know you do. You know you do. Stop being jackass. Hey, Dave, can I ask you a question? <laughs> yeah. Are you proud of me? You've seen me pretty much every day for the past 10 days. What do I own? You have not had snow on the top of your car. <laughs> not Holy bad. shit. No, no. Not just that. What else do I own? I own two things out of the drop that... So you don't know boots. Say, you, so you got, got gloves. gloves? You know? No, I don't have gloves. No hat. No hat. 
Gloves. Scraper? Yeah, you, yeah, you saw me scraper. That's right. You, you, yeah, you had scraper. Um, I thought I, I thought I had developed Parkinson's riding in Bob's car. <laughs> <laughs> he's, got, he's got those low pro- profile tires and ice gets in them. And dude, it like dude, the back end shook worse than like I don't know. We were singing night. wobble baby, wobble <laughs> baby, wobble baby, wobble. Um, but I, I own a scarf too, and a scarf. Oh, oh yeah, I've seen you in a scarf. What's yeah, is it so, a festive Christmas scarf? So that was no, it's a Stroh's beer scarf. Oh. You um, know, cleaning off your car is going to be a lot nicer when you have gloves. No, with the a scraper. scraper. No, a no, because that was the he made fun of me for years. He's like, so you have no boot, you have no gloves. Like that was like a drop yeah. for years. I think, yeah, we have it still. Yeah, right. I'm like, no, no, no. I don't scrape. Have any- you lived in Michigan all my life? All my life. <laughs> yeah. You, sir, a jackass. Um, I'm usually the guy that scrapes the like the six inch by six inch hole into the front of the windshield <laughs> and just drives <laughs> and hopes like the w- snow blows off, so then I can turn on the the. The, the wipers and then the water will come out hopefully and it's not frozen too use your um, credit card as a scraper totally no, I've never <laughs> done that yeah, totally. <laughs> I've never done that but uh, also David in our in our tr- in our trolleys and, and fun this week we went to uh, your new favorite arena the dojo uh, yeah the pizza screw arena screw the dojo the Illich, Illich Village Illich Village yeah, yeah. Little Caesar's Village. Arena the village. <laughs> the village a, people. I have a village people. people. Apparently, what the, happens when you move next to the arena. You are now a village person. Apparently, on the fourth deck, whatever the mezzanine or whatever they call it, like if you're five eight and 160 pounds, you can't fit in those seats. Hmm. And no one. And not only can you not fit, but no one can walk in front of you. Like, like you, Spirit Airlines. It's worse. Basically, yeah. It's, it's like a Greyhound bus. Um, for some reason, they chose to make. The lower level bowls. The only time I've been there is on the main floor for wrestling and then at the suite. So I don't know what it's like. Pardon you know, me, Mr. Sweet Person. Ah, Comcast, you're, you know. Thanks, you, Michelle. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Michelle. Um, but like, you, I could, there's no way I'm sitting up in the fourth, the fourth deck. I'd rather not even go. Well, no, and not only that, but like, I don't know who the hell designed this place, but so to get to the suites on the second level, there's no escalators. Uh, they're elevators. Though. Elevator, but they're hard to find. They are. You gotta know where the hell they are. They're very difficult um, to find. And there are only like three staircases around the entire ring. So if you're somewhere between, like, if you're like dead smack in the middle between those staircases, and you're walking around with gouty McLimps a lot, <laughs> it's it's not a it's not a great time. It's it's not fun at all. I can't imagine like bringing my. I couldn't bring my dad there. Nope. There's no way. No. Well, I can bring him to Copa Comerica all right? day. <laughs> Um, there's no way I'm taking my dad to a hockey game, which is was something I wanted to do because he loves the wings, you know. But and then, oh, and then you get your voice out for that one. Oh, voice. no, no, no. It's he's a no. He's in a dying population, and, literally. Yeah, but no. But so, <laughs> dude, last time I checked, smoking was still legal. You literally can't. And I, I don't, you can't smoke in the arena, and I'm fine with that. And nowhere on the grounds, no, like right? you can't walk out, yeah, have we a went. smoke, and come back in. Kiss my ass. I tried to pull the sweet card too. I'm like, hey guys, I'm in a sweet. Can I go outside and smoke? And they're like, no. How did they, they survive? Gruff. They were how, super gruff. How, how did they survive fun? eight Kid Rock concerts? Well, apparently everybody just smoked. And the Grateful Dead. Apparently everybody just smoked. Well, that's what, that's what I told Which you. Which like, I should have just done. I told but you just go in the shitter and smoke. Being. What are they going to do? <laughs> you know, Dude, I can make it four hours cannon. without smoking. Need smoking. your fix. Yeah, yeah, like I, a troll. I was For me, I just, I mean, the interior had its issues, but I just didn't find any of that ring any of any of that any fun i felt like i was going into the lobby of like a fortune a 500 company or a mall a mall it was like great totally lakes like crossing great, totally like with great. hockey in the middle it was not fun and everywhere i go through it's like got that carpet and that beige everything i didn't feel like i was in a sports arena nope. i felt like i was going to work and if i wanted to do that you know i wouldn't have paid for the privilege well and just for a, like a stupid ass i mean like specifically the event we were at was wwe and so we're up in a suite on the second level, on the second floor, the event is happening way down in the ring. I can't even. Wow. We are looking directly at the jumbotron. It's a pretty freaking awesome screen, right? Yeah. But they're not using. I think that's it would what... be if they had the matches up on the. Wait, jumbotron. they didn't put them up on the jumbo. What? They showed the WWE oh. logo, which was. And here's how stupid that is. They showed the entries. They they showed the entrances as they were coming in to the ring, and then put the WWE logo up for the. Not even like a match. follow cam, nothing? nothing? Nope. Oh, my God. So Dumb. you had a better scene watching it from home on TV. Totally. Oh, Except geez. it was, wasn't on TV. Because oh. it's it one a, of those shows. Is they showing the TVs in the suite or no? No. no. TVs oh are all off. God. Pass vision is turned off oh. during all events. So, like, at the Palace, I remember, like, if you take clients to the Pistons game and you wanted to sit in, like, in the leather chairs and have a beer and talk shop, 
you can still watch the game in the background. Yeah, totally. Or have it on. Right. Uh, they mandatory shut up on all televisions in the suite. Jesus. Well, and like every gate there in that concourse, they all had brands on them. So it was like, it looked like you were walking into a Meyer, but it was just what they named the gate. <laughs> it was like the Meyer gate. And then this, it's like everything was an ad. And I get it. Sports are supposed to be commercial. It's a thing nowadays, whatever. But everywhere, it was one thing after another after another. And like, it didn't feel like a hockey arena. It didn't feel like a Pistons arena or a basketball arena. It's a great event space if you're not a sports fan. Right. I'll throw that out there. If you're a casual sports fan, you will love it. If you're a diehard junkie. I mean, I love the Joe. I love Tiger Stadium. I actually really like Comerica Park. The Joe was fun. I didn't love the Joe. Let me, let's get that. You're right. You're right. The seats and things like that. There were a lot of issues with the Joe, but it was a, there was a magic to it. Well, how about right? let's pick this up. I didn't up. feel any magic with Little Caesars Arena. It felt like a bunch of IKEA furniture pushed together. Totally. So I'm going to segue from the uh, the Red Wings. Uh, the Lions uh, have continued to suck. Uh, they they are done for the year. Uh, which brings me to the next story, which is uh, Vince McMahon has apparently sold off 100 million dollars worth of his WWE stock. Double segue there, like that. Yeah, uh, and he's apparently talking about bringing back the XFL. Sweet, can Detroit get a team? Yes, please, for the love of God, can Detroit? He get hate a team? me. Come <laughs> to Detroit. He's going to be the head coach. He hate me. I loved. <laughs> I was one of the weirdos. That, I, dude, I, lo- I love the XFL. Well, they were the ones I, you that know pioneered. I could care less about football. Love the XFL. They pioneered. The problem with the XFL is they, they the kickoffs were dumb. They did the roll the ball down the middle like a basketball. Well, they also Di- had. Uh, well, they they did the, uh, well, they pioneered, the run to the end zone and back. Right, but they pioneered Madden Cam. Yep. Which the NFL totally stole off of them. Oh, absolutely. And if you never watched the thirty for thirty for XFL, I mean, it was pretty uh, pretty awesome with the whole Dick Ebersol thing with uh, with NBC. Um, I hope it comes back because well, people are starved for football anyway, and you put out they don't, they don't care who's out well, there. Apparently, everybody's cranky about the NFL these days, and because there's politics well, in the game, and right. There's This and there's that, and there's so, blah, blah 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 blah. Whatever, Vince. You have our blessing. I'm Bring in. It back. I want. Well, you know <laughs> I what? Know, I know you were waiting to hear from us on this. Man. Hold on. No, we will put our bid in to buy the first Detroit team. Hopefully, You're, it costs yeah. under ten th- or like three grand. If it's under three <laughs> grand, we will buy the first. So you think maybe since Gilbert couldn't get a soccer team, maybe he can go after an XFL team? No, no, because we're buying it. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's under I three grand. For it. No, but um, a kind of a cool story came out. And, you know, my kids have been. And myself as well, since uh, Comcast has been out for like a week. Um, I've been watching a ton of Netflix. Um, <laughs> and yet not Black Mirror. No, I haven't. I haven't but, seen it either. No, but a cool story oh, came out with, so you know, they talk about all like, the crappy commercials kids have to watch, like between the ED pills and the stupid Chantix and, you know, may cause diarrhea. buy this, buy this, buy this. Right. And you need that and you need this. Uh, Netflix apparently has been saving kids 230 hours worth of commercials. Every year in Netflix only houses, nine point six days of commercials. A right, year. I don't doubt it. And the thing, scared, the thing that scared me in the article was that since the average kid watches two point six eight hours of television a day, almost three hours of TV for sure. a kid per day. I buy that. Yeah, that's oh, ridiculous. Nine hundred eighty like hours a year. But if you look at regular television programming, what's a half an hour? Twenty two minutes 22 of programming. Minutes. And then eight minutes, yeah. eight to nine minutes mm. of commercials. Yeah, your average hour show is only forty three minutes. Right, but no, dude, I know that. Like, God, I mean, that's I. I hate watching crap that I have uh, my DVR now. I mean, even even I, I'm getting that spoiled where I don't even like fast forwarding through commercials anymore. <laughs> see, that's where it's lit comes in because you guys can live stream and everybody can see all the crap you're doing. You know what I mean? See, so, oh my gosh, cheap plug. <laughs> Segment yeah. two's been canceled. We're gonna have a short show. <laughs> uh, really? I get another one. We're going to Salinas. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and another thing is, take a. Uh, I know you see the article, so. I'm I'm just going to be play along. Just okay. Play along. How many uh, how many boxes do you think Amazon? Jerry, I'll have you answer. How many boxes do you think Amazon Prime shipped in the year 2017? I'm going to bid a dollar, Bob. <laughs> do a dollar fifty. You think he'll go? You think he'll go over? <laughs> think you go over? You got three seconds, Jerry. Three, two. Uh, One point five billion. Uh, let's go five. Wow. Five billion. Four of them came to my house. Um, <laughs> alter- alternatively filled with video games and bulk toilet paper. Right. Uh, totally. <laughs> and Funyuns. And Funyuns. Funyuns. Pork flavored Funyuns. Pork and my, flavored. No, and my bottled water that I can't, I buy cases at a time the mail lady hates me because <laughs> she's got to walk up my stoop with cases of this stuff. Uh, you're, you better have tipped the shit out of her. I don't know. It's the same one that doesn't come all the time. So I'm not tipping nobody that's different. So you don't probably shovel your walk and you're probably. I'm going to live in HOA. Oh, okay. 
Do you dress yourself, tie your own shoes, or <laughs> operate a self-checkout machine? My shoes are not tied right now. I'm going to feel like it. How do you feel about pumping gas? Hey, I pump my to, gas. I have to. Who what wants am I to buy movebobtoportland.org? I, I want to yeah. movebobtoaranch.org. <laughs> <laughs> Bay the hail, kiss my ass. Ship will do it. <laughs> you sit him on the porch. Blue Apron makes my chair. food. Shipped brings my groceries. Amazon brings my TP. And everything else known to man. I'm curious to see how this lawsuit plays out. Spotify late earlier today got hit with a 1.6 billion with a B with a B dollar lawsuit um, brought by essentially a class action thing brought by the composers that dealt with like Neil Young and a bunch of other people. Um, here's the part about this that concerns me because I mean obviously we do a lot of stuff for, like you know we play music over the streams that kind of thing. We buy our licenses you know through ASCAP and BMI. Life's good. So if Spotify apparently can't even figure out how to get licensing right, are are we doing it right? Like I think we are. Wait until we get the lawsuit. We're totally doing it right. Well, like I, I think I did it right. We're because... not going to be held liable for anything, are we? Oh God, no. Uh, you, you might get subpoenaed, but <laughs> uh, no. So like I like I, I, yeah, I like everything that I've ever read says. This is what I'm supposed but to be like, doing, and I do it. No, but like the music group that's suing is like Tom Petty and a few other assorted, you know, people that you Stevie may or may Nicks, not know. Stevie Nicks, Nicks. Nicks. River Cuomo, but like Steely Dan's Don Fagan. What what what's the total of like the royalties that would have had to get paid to this music group? So there's actually a quote from the complaint that says we estimate that our clients account for somewhere between one and five percent of the music these services distribute. They have more than three billion with a B annual revenue and pays outrageous annual salaries to its executives. We think this is basically fair by taking a minuscule amount of the revenue they take in with the creators. Of the Spotify yourself. makes three billion a year, uh, in oh, revenue. Yeah. In revenue, but that's not profit. No, they have to pay licensing fees, but still, it's a lot. Well, apparently they don't. Or don't. Oh, or don't. <laughs> yeah. but, but I also think that there there have been a lot of artists who've been trying to push because the amount of revenue you get off of a stream is so much less than an it's album pennies. sale. It's pennies per play. And so right? I think this lawsuit is Wait. definitely about. Trying to make a point? No, but they're, they're, you're, the math is bad because they say we estimate our stuff as 1% of the playlist, yet they want half the yearly re- gross revenue for Over the lawsuits. how many years, though, right? How many years has Spotify been doing this? Right. Two? No, they've been around for – got at, at this fired this, up my Google At this play, at this pay, yeah. like the, the premium because it was free in the beginning. They were founded in April 23rd of 2006. Right, but they haven't been doing the – what they're now, like the 15 bucks a month stuff. Right. They haven't been doing that maybe a couple years. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, it's possible. Uh, no, so I mean, I, I am. I mean, I'm curious to see how that plays out just because, I mean, it is. And what, the, what basically what they're saying is that the vast majority <laughs> of this stuff, like the revenues that do get paid out, go to the label and never the artist. Now, and like, I, I don't know, is that an issue between the artists and the labels then? Well, if the, the label's going, our contract doesn't say nothing about no internet. That that's garbage. Yeah, but, but that is to Pandora too, right? Pandora was sued totally. for something similar yep. a couple years ago and the increase of fees that they paid to their Oh, because uh whatever artist bitched that they got like twelve dollars from it and then yet they were it was streamed like Yeah, wasn't it like Taylor Swift? Uh, yeah, something she got like big. here's uh, my yeah, royalty yeah. check, it's twelve bucks and my I, my song got streamed hundred and eighty million times or whatever. Something crazy. You know what else is kind of interesting to play out? Not we're not going to end on this note. But we'll try to find something funny. But uh, Uber has been de- basically designated as a taxi company from the uh, European In England, uh, yeah. Court of Justice. So that completely. Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, big... at the European Court of Justice, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a big kick in the balls for Uber, though, right? Because they basically argue that they're not subject to the same right. taxi regulations. The if I've said, dude, medallions. I've said it a million times. Their legal argument is the same as a pimp. We just put two. We just put two consenting adults together. Take a little cut off the top. Whatever happens after that is on them. That is Uber's legal defense. That is a pimp's legal defense. And so we should start a new Uber. Call it Iceberg Slim. Pimper, just, pimper, ice, whatever. P i m p r. Right. Yeah. Damn. Why don't we do that for it? Never mind. It is, right. <laughs> no, so I am. I, again, I'm curious to see if they're going to wind up pulling out of England. I mean, it's you know, if it becomes the that bigger EU, which. Well, no, they're not. No, they're they're Brexiting. Well, right, but this was an EU decision, right? So that's like Spain and yeah. Czech, uh, Czech yeah, Republic like the, and yeah, all those places, all right? The, the, all the things. That's crazy. Me, me. 
gone. Yeah. No, seriously. Why wouldn't they just shut off the app in England? Yeah, Pro- exactly. Man, problem we don't solved. Need to be there. All and right. all the people that were doing it were kind of doing it on the site anyway. That wasn't their livelihood. Nah. Right. So the, the newest episode of uh, Shameless, where Carl start, puts the word Uber in his front window, and it's like U U or U B B E R, and Carl is driving Fiona's car around, pretending to be an Uber driver. Nice. People oh, that are so waiting, good. he'll go. I'll do it for half of Uber. Yeah, he's yeah, like, right. I'll do it for half. We're gonna pay <laughs> all cash. Why not? Right. Um. And the one that I hate, or the one that I don't, ad targeters. Like, you know, we pick oh, a lot of businesses. This was kind of we've talked about this all. You know, I, I don't always search for something on Amazon, but when I do, there's an ad waiting for me on Facebook. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but man, someone sits in a boardroom and says, "You know what? All the password manager companies know where all the people are going because the password manager logs in their password." Right. So what if we? Could track them on all the sites they go to as they're Can going we there. Pull data out of there and figure out and, where they've been. Right, and then send them push ads to Sons them. Sons of bitches. So, so basically, what they're doing is your password manager will automatically fill in your credentials if it detects the right elements in the form. Right. So they're building secret invisible login forms for pages in the background. <laughs> so your password manager is like, "Oh, cool! I can log into USAA or Bank of America or Spotify or New York Times." And it will automatically fill in your credentials. And it's like, okay, well, that means they could scrape the username and the password. Sure. They're like, oh, no, we're not scraping the password. But there's nothing technically to prevent it, which should scare the shit God, out of I everyone hate, who I uses hate. a password manager. This is what you should be doing. Right. It's and all about the clickety clicks. You can, you can turn this off, though. So if you use yeah. – I use LastPass. So if you go into preferences and you can actually – there is a automatically fill login information. You can remove that, check and click save, and that will reduce your vulnerability to this attack. Cool. This so. way, the password manager is still remembering your password. You just have to proactively say, Tell hey, yes, yes fill out no. this form for me. This has been a public service message from IT in the D. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, hey, uh, Apple uh, finally broke down and admitted something they've denied for a long, long time. Hey, Apple. <clears throat> hey, Apple. <laughs> hey, Apple. I feel like Randy's got some comments on this one. Y- yes. They are not slowing down phones so that you buy a new phone. They are or so they slowing down phones to preserve your existing device so it lasts longer. So they claim. Oh, how nice. Sounds like Here's some fresh software like that's going to destroy your battery. We're the good guys. No, 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 no. I didn't cheat on you <laughs> to cheat on you. I cheated on you to spice things up. Right, right. <laughs> to, to keep my reproductive bits warm. Yeah. Really? You're not absolving them. Are you really? So there are two options. Like I love how one, first of all, everybody is suddenly a chemical engineer knows exactly how lithium ion batteries work now. Like Facebook is full of We all do. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, Don't work. You all, throw, they slow down, you throw them away. We're all Supreme Court justices and we're right. all political we all know the constitution inside and out. But yeah, I mean there are two options when the power draw is too high. Either reduce the power draw or just shut off because you can't deliver enough power. But like, okay, let's look at this from a personal computer standpoint. If you got a Office or a Windows ninety eight computer, your laptop has been doing power management for years. Right, right, right. But what I'm saying is, Windows never forced you until ten, like, to upgrade to the latest OS. And if you do, like, they're basically pushing you to up. So they're basically forcing you to take the latest OS, which is, they know is going to denigrate your system or your phone. Right? Denigrate. Denigrate. Right degrade. Degrade. Yeah. Denigrate. What word am I thinking? Of? Wow. You know, guys, know I'm on medication <laughs> and I'm cloudy. Leave me alone. <laughs> Were you listening to In Excess on the radio? I don't radio? know. Denigrate, alleviate, try not Well, this pay, update has been out since February of last year. Uh, people have just been noticing it. But, you know, they're doing it to win the no, phone. They haven't request. just been – dude, this – when like four went to five and five went to six and six went to seven and now – this, this has been a thing forever, forever. But this that's not what thing. this is. Like, sure, new versions are going to have new features, things yeah. like that, that, you know, the older phone might not be able to run. But this is actually designed to, you know, keep your phone from crashing in extreme situations. I think Apple got caught with their hand in the cookie jar. Uh, yeah. Hold, hold yeah. Their yep. Skeptical Dave is skeptical. <laughs> I think that dude's getting a check from Apple. <laughs> As in, 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 <laughs> for the $60 yeah. that they've cut off the price of his battery. 20,000 yeah. dongs. Right. So, so iPhone 6, 6 Plus, SE... 6S plus 6S, uh, they're introduced power management features. They've rolled it out to the iPhone 7s. Um, but if you have battery problems, you can go to the Apple Store and they'll replace it for $29. Oh, great. Thanks, Apple. You're the best. And you can do it whether or not your battery is screwed yeah. up. So go do it anyway just to show Just Apple to get a fresh battery. Who's the man? So speaking of fresh batteries, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back with the team from It's Lit, Robin Tino. This is the IT in the D Show. And we'll be right back. IT in the D. Reads. 
meet, listen. Networking Detroit, one beer at a time. Hey, this is John Schneider from Nip Tuck Smallville, the haves and the have-nots. Oh, Dr. Quinn, hot in Cleveland. Secret Lives of the American Teenager and just about everything you can possibly imagine. And oh yeah, the Dukes of Hazard. You're listening to Bob and Dave. See IT in the D show. IT in the D dot com. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you for hanging out with us. This is segment two, episode 228 of the very first episode of 2018 of the IT in the D show. All right, should we call it uh, season what? No, no seasons. I hate that. Four or five. Podcast. No. Episode one. It's 228. Yeah. Man. And we keep going. <laughs> this is Pop the Sales Guy. That's David Geek, Nerdy the FNGs in the house. That's Randy popping his Diet Coke into the mic. <laughs> uh, you can't do Have that anymore, Randy. about that. <laughs> Randy, I do the Twitter's walkers in the, the table house. table when you do it. It has to be a beer. <laughs> No, beer we're fine with in the mic. <laughs> <laughs> the listeners only know because you told them. Find us online, <laughs> itnd.com. Give us a like on the social. Uh, follow us at our meet tab. That's M E E T, and uh, we have meet now. It's 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 not going to be it in the D Monday night. The meet Monday six. night meet text. Was but it from the company I sent you? It's going to be the, no. It's going to be it's it's going to the original. It's going to go into yeah. We're going to put it. We're going to bring it into falling down. Uh, but we will have meet. And but check out our meet tab. That's M E E T to uh to subscribe to our calendar and like all the us and all that fun stuff and subscribe to us everywhere. Fine podcasts are sold. Do that. So hey, we are uh, we've been joined by a couple uh, jokey McJokesters here. We got uh, <laughs> we got Rob and Tino here. They are uh, with a I think it's a relative startup. It's a very very cool technology called It's Lit. Um, gentlemen, how you doing? Good, good. good. Been Thanks in for a, having us. Anytime, anytime. But you guys, um, I mean, in a nutshell, have so let's say we want to go live here and we got to go Facebook Live with one phone and then YouTube with another phone and Periscope with another phone. You guys kind of figured out a cool way to just to have the easy button, and bam, I'm going video live. Well, yeah, because I mean, like we've got you know we've got cams in all the studios, and we've got software that powers them, but you can only go live on one at a time. Whether there's it's a Facebook camera in the live, bathroom, YouTube man. live, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seeing the camera in the bathroom too, so I covered that up. <laughs> Bob, the what bathroom you do? Cam. Is there a camera <laughs> in the lady toilet? <laughs> Yeah, so that's it. Uh, found a need for the user and obviously business as well. Uh, streaming live simultaneously on multiple platforms provides a great solution for any company or individual out there trying to promote themselves. So what's it, I mean? So what's it look like? Because I know Facebook's. I know you're showing me your phone, yeah. Fa- but I mean, <laughs> what I'm saying is, like, <laughs> show you the beta. This actually, he's this sitting next to me. What's it radio- look like? He just hands his phone to me. Here's what the beta. Makes great radio, Bob. Great what radio. I mean, what I mean is when like because. YouTube's got its own GUI. Facebook has its own GUI. Periscope has its own GUI. So how are you guys cross? Like, are, is it coming in native, looking like their own live, or, or is it different? Or, I mean, what's it look like when to the to the end user? So we make it pretty simple with the user interface. So if you go on the live stream interface with its lit, uh, you're able to log in very quickly with your uh, credentials. So as soon as you're logged in, you're right there. You select some buttons. So and, make- and how? Just so log in. Is it like? Am I signing up with my Facebook account? Am I? You can with yeah, your Facebook exactly, account, yeah. and you can also do an its lit account. Okay. Or, mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so as soon as you're logged in, your handles are set up for the live stream interface. It allows you to select the platforms uh, that you want to go live on simultaneously or select. Yeah, I did notice that we were talking about it earlier. Yeah. You know, basically some toggle buttons. Yeah. Here's where I want to go live and yeah. You make it that simple, and then that's it. You press go live and then you're streaming. So now like I know from like this perspective, you know, there's like stream keys and all that fun stuff. Like is that all just handled by you guys and you do your thing? Yeah, so the back end is all handled. It's so easy. We just keep it simple. Cool. Um, that's easy, you know. That's I, easy is good. I mean, it's, it's like I said, you know, I, I kind of want to play around with it here for our stuff. Well, that's the whole point. Hey, the I'm app. going. The yeah. app. Yeah. The well, app. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Get the bell. He spends no, a but, lot of time here in the studio. We I, I really do. Yeah. No, but that's the whole point, You didn't though, notice is... the black leather couch out front? <laughs> didn't look familiar at all? Yeah. I thought you didn't sit there. <laughs> um, no, that's the whole point, though. I'm going live. I need to go now. I don't need to click 100 things. Just just let me do it. Yeah. Right. right? So, like, mm-hmm. so right now you're YouTube and Facebook only. Uh, what are I guess future expansion plans? Do you have any yet, yeah, or are you just going to yeah, prove absolutely. this out? Yeah, Integrations for 2.0 that we're coming out with. Yeah, yeah we're going to put in a bunch of different APIs. Uh, we also developed our own live stream platform. It kind of has a twist to it, so we integrated a social feed within this app as well, attached with the story interface. So we're kind of you know bringing the social aspect to it versus the business and individual promotion you can do with the live stream as well. So we'll have our own live stream platform, and we're expecting to integrate some more APIs in the future. So, and you you did you said you're in beta currently. 
currently. Yep. So is there a way for people to get hooked into the beta? When are you planning on going live? If What's you go to uh, itslit.io, you can sign up. Uh, so it's I-T-Z lit? Yeah, I-T-Z-L-I-T, you got I-T-Z-L-I-T dot I-O. And then sign up there and then you'll get a uh, notification through email to uh, sign up for the beta. Yeah, uh, and then Android, Android iPhone? iOS only. And iOS only. Okay. Right now we're going to prepare and uh, pretty soon we'll be launching for Android. So Randy will be using it until <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, two guys. With, <laughs> yeah, yeah, one platform <laughs> at a time. You know. yeah. So it's I guess come out very quickly. Oh, cool. A couple months. What the, prompted this idea? Let's take it back to oh, day cool. one. Yeah, so what happened was is uh, I'm a you know WSU uh, undergrad, so I graduated uh, with a double major in ISM and uh, supply chain. And for an app development project, um, <laughs> what happened was is I was presenting this app, and it was just a wireframe at the time, so it was a final. And uh, ended up getting a good grade and going to the motocross track that day, and that's where I met Rob, uh, who's the co-founder now. He had a real funky concept. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Listen up, because you want to keep it in stuff. Yeah, yeah. Here's an idea. I want to share. If you don't share. like it, so what? I don't care. Yeah, that's how it's a total no conversation. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I he did this to meet checks. <laughs> you know, no. I got the one I want, but uh, <laughs> so yeah, I ended up going to the motocross track that day, and you know, Rob's like, you know, how was your day and stuff like that, and I told him, you know, I presented a project, and he's like, would you present? And I'm like, well, I just it was a wireframe at the time. It's just an app. And he's like, well, what it, what was it? And I told him everything. He's like, well, let's do it. And I'm like, what? And I was kind of thrown off at the time, you know. And his motivation is follow through. And I'm like, you know what? Why not? You know, let's let's follow through with it. So then now we're here and we're about to drop beta and doing some great testing. I think so, it's our experience that eh, why not? It's pretty much a really solid business plan. Totally, to especially right. while drinking. Right? Let's while do it. Drinking with, yeah, Bar know. napkin deals, those, those are yeah. 90% of the things I do. So, I mean, what was the initial hook into the the EDM slash DJ community? Do you just figured that was the lowest hanging fruit? or <laughs> you're, you're talking about me. I yeah, I know. That, right? yeah, I yeah. have no hanging fruit here. Yeah, yeah. No, That's yeah, like... I've always been into EDM and uh, took a couple of vacations That's to, a compliment, to right? Vegas Thank and you. things like that. And uh, after going to a couple of festivals, I realized that this would be a great target market, definitely to start, you know, approaching. And then if we well, see this, they, market, got, they got free time. Yeah. I mean, they they press play and I then mean, they hold up their phone. I yeah, mean, that's- honestly. <laughs> Uh, I'm my middle finger in the uh, at least we got one guy here back. No, they gotta turn. Yeah. They gotta turn the bass a little bit down, a little bit up. No, we turn it all the way. Press the thick button right in the middle. Right. But actually, the treble a little bit down, a little right. bit up. Like, no, we turn the bass all the way up. But yeah, definitely. <laughs> when I went to these festivals, I was seeing everyone has their phone up. They're you know recording this content, regardless of where it's going to. I figured, you know what? Why not make something related to this market, and then you can use it for definitely other purposes as well. But this is a great opportunity to um, start with this as a target market. You know. No, no question. Like I said, but I, you know, as soon as you brought it up to me, I said, you know, that's a great intro market. But I mean, God, I could think the applications could be absolutely. You look at anyone that's doing this wants to go across multiple platforms. Oh, absolutely. There isn't yeah. one person. You know, right now everybody's kind of choosing Facebook and they're kind of ignoring YouTube. And to me, that's an untapped. Uh, you know, where I think YouTube's a better product for stuff like that. Yeah, I agree. And uh, we integrated a social feed, and uh, we understand that a lot of people aren't going live, and we we have a great solution for that. So once you see our app drops on iOS, you're going to be like, oh, I see how they're going to promote more people to actually go live. <coughs> okay. So there's something, there's a twist with a lot of things, a lot of thought that we're putting into this, eliminating a lot of the social pressure that's currently out with social media today too, so... Well, we when can't. I say social pressure, it's like when you take a picture, you're about to post it on Instagram. You're going to think of a caption. You're going to worry about how many likes you're going to get. You know, most people are which worried filter about you that. use exactly. It's, it's crazy. Not what I'm doing it yeah, wrong we're just I don't we're gonna it. we're gonna yeah, keep we're it the old guys. Right you know, I'm, I'm right. the trust fund baby. That's now Dave's been <laughs> vague. Dave's been vague booking all Christmas holiday at two in the morning. <laughs> These cryptic Facebook posts. like yeah, you're totally not thinking about what you're posting. <laughs> No, because we've been we were drunk the entire Christmas break. Yeah, I know. And two, <laughs> two in the morning comes the um, I don't like you. Like who? And everybody's like who, Dave? We're like <laughs> actually, Bob, let you know a secret. Dave is actually Cicada thirty three hundred one, and he's starting the this year's game. <laughs> Sorry, that's what his cryptic Facebook post. Sorry. Oh, oh, all right. <laughs> so no, cool. All right. So yeah. So it, it, you're planning on taking all that nonsense away from it? Yeah, kind of making it um, more user friendly and uh, keeping it lit. You know. All right, so weird question, and tell me to, to tell what, me. What's lit mean <laughs> no, for the old man? No, Urban Dictionary told Still me waiting. what that means. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, but my question is, how do you plan on monetizing this? And tell me to so go screw myself. If we're gonna, yet, we're but. definitely gonna keep it free, build a user base. A monetization strategy is gonna be definitely in version 2.0. We're gonna do it mostly within the live stream, uh, probably pre- pre-roll, mid-roll ads. Let's not keep it too complicated and annoying because we all know ads are annoying. Mm-hmm. Uh, any pop-up that you get, most likely, I mean, 
me and probably a lot of people feel this way. I hate pop-ups. Pop-ups are, you know, it's kind of annoying to deal with. So we're going to monetize. Oh, it. As soon as I see video will continue after this ad, I hit my back. All right. I'm right. Exactly. Yep. So we understand that. We understand the user's uh, frustration. We're going to definitely monetize within that perspective. So we uh, monetize, you know, the best strategy that we have. You know, one of the things that the, I, I thought TV well, was trying to do is business licensing. I mean, yeah. No, when I was studying marketing way back in the day, they were doing the whole like, you know, like soccer games were very good at doing this where they don't you go to commercial. sell ads in the stone tablets, Bobby. They do. <laughs> no, but like soccer games are the soccer seems like the only sport to be doing this is they put like the McDonald's ad in the bottom corner. So you're not intruding, right. you're getting the brand, uh, the branding, the notoriety, whatever. Yep, yep. But you're not interrupting my thing. So when I'm watching mm-hmm. my tasty video on how to make some marinara, and you got to stop that shit to see some Chantix ad, <laughs> like that's going to give me diarrhea. Cholesterol ad, right? Right, yeah. right, right. I just, just like, can't you just put the? So I'm, I'm not throwing ideas at you or trying to help, but I, like, that's not a bad call. Like, just to, mm. you know, so it's not intrusive, but you're still getting, uh, both, you know, win, yeah. well, win, win. And as an option, just to think about it, as a professional content creator, there's a lot of tools that? we spend <laughs> money on every month to not have branding on it. Right? White label. Yeah, yeah. white label. Yeah. We spend nine, twenty, twenty five, whatever a month to be like, okay, this is just a tool that we're going to use as professionals. That's monetization itself. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like direct money. Ex- yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Or even if I was Diplo or something and a little message popped up like, I'm also playing at Coachella this year. Click here to buy tickets. Like, I mean, even for the creators themselves, there's absolutely options. there's wow. so many options uh-huh. for if, if you're a DJ, you're promoting, if you own your own local business, if you're an individual, you know, why not go live on Instagram? Well, yeah, because the club might want to pop up and be like, hey, or next my weekend, sound we've got to download yeah. the mix right after a show exactly. or something like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. No, oh, very cool. So, like, uh, timing? Did I miss that? So we're we're doing some final testing right now, uh, focusing on eliminating a lot of the you know bugs that we've kind of cleared out, and everything is looking very good. Uh, we're dropping beta to all of our uh, in-house <laughs> users right now for some testing and feedback. We're planning for January nineteenth, and that is actually a concert at uh, Masonic Temple Marshmallow. Oh, gonna be uh, kind of, so we'll be it. We'll be there. Bob's you know, so favorite DJ. Catch the it's lit team. There. <laughs> it's Bob's favorite midnight <laughs> snack. <laughs> That's it. He's an artist. He's an artist. Is. Yeah. I just so. played a show, a big show out in Ann Arbor for New Year's Eve, and there was a massive crowd. And I would have loved to have some kind of oh, absolutely something to allow me to stream to all my platforms. Well, yeah. Yeah. You should have called us earlier, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I should pay attention. To no, my no. Mail. He should have reached out to us earlier because yeah. that's how this all came together. Yeah, there you go. He did call me up. He's like, "Hey, we got a radio thing." I'm like. All right, let's do it. You know, let's, you know, just like how this all started, let's keep rolling. You know, awesome. All right, so it's lit. I t z l i t dot i o. Anything we missed? Anything you want to talk through? Uh, we're good. Well, it's going to be the any questions or yeah. anything. Or what's your phone number here for people to call? And we don't. No, it's calling. Oh, yeah. Nobody calls me. No, no, no this isn't. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, 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 it never oh, ends. It I, never I, I ends well. We forgive you. Calls never go it's well. Someone who used to know Dave <laughs> from New Hampshire twenty years ago. That's right. Joel's probably <laughs> drunk in New Hampshire, listening and waiting to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did, we do, did we do Collins for like the first like and then like Tad called and pretended he was someone else? He was a carpet salesman. And Rob and called and pretended he was someone. I love you guys. It turned into all of our buddies calling in drunk as hell, and we were like, "Yeah, no more calls." I can see. I can see why you don't do numbers now. That's funny. It says something about your friends. They were calling in drunk as hell on a Monday night. Hey, let's it, 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 no birds judgment. of a feather. No judgment. No judgment. Bird, birds of a feather. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> thing. Yeah. All right. So cool. So it's yeah. lit. Itz lit. Io coming out for iOS uh, beta. You can get your hands on now. Yep. Drop and release. Yep. Uh, Drop an email. 19th. We'll get you beta very soon here. Yep. <laughs> I was gonna say we. You know, if you need any more beta users, we got our studio. There's probably what. 20, 30 shows that come out of here a week. Oh, yeah. Awesome. We Facebook Live that. or go some sort of live. Absolutely. That we, we can, can be here. Yeah. We can put it in their hands. And, and they've already them. put my email in as well. Let's oh, do it. Did? Yeah, I totally oh, yeah. did. So, yeah, I totally. appreciate that. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. yeah sounds good. Well, I've never gone live. So, it's, I'm, yeah, they're missing me, but that's all right. They're, they're, they'll be just fine without yeah, me. Yeah, I don't think you've ever done a live. Yeah, I have never. <laughs> yeah, no. I've never. You can do it when you're clearing off your car. Oh. So, I shouldn't do stuck in traffic videos? The only time you went live is when you yelled about slow roll, and that was Tom. Oh, my God. That was hilarious. Yeah. No, Tom. Went live. Tom, yeah, Tom, Tom went, went live. live, and I and I caught living. Bob doesn't for even it. go live for himself. He can <laughs> ship. He can't even go live. He goes live by proxy. But hey, Rob Tino, appreciate the guy. Appreciate your time. It's lit.io. Um, keep in touch with us. We want to see how you, when you guys grow. When you hit 2.0, come back. Yeah, for um, sure. And Absolutely, then, uh, guys, yeah. like I said, well, you when need... you got something I can hook into the studios, I would like to pay exactly. Yeah, we'll collaborate Charlie for sure. Here, yeah. <laughs> January nineteenth. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Keep in touch. Awesome. Appreciate you guys coming by lo- late notice. They're uh, coming all the way from Down River, long hike. Oh, nice. But, oh, yeah, yeah. No, we appreciate it though. Down River, come on, it's Down River Heights. <laughs>
We're gonna take, we're gonna take a quick. Speaking of uh, what did you say? I was gonna say speaking of d- down river. Speaking heights, of heights, we're gonna go speaking low. Speaking of heights, we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna come back with Jeremiah Daily Detroit. We're gonna talk about uh, 2017 and moving into 2018. This is the IT and the D show, and we'll be right back. IT and the D, read, meet, listen. Networking Detroit. One beer at a time. Hi, I'm Brittany Daniel from The Game, and you're listening to IT in the D Show. IT in the D.com. Do you have the time? Welcome back to segment three, episode 228. This is the first episode and the third segment of 2018 here at the IT in the D Show. Hooray! Wee! <laughs> we made it. Happy New Year. We're hanging out here in Studio One in Podcast Detroit in beautiful Royal Oak, Michigan. This is Bob, the sales guy, hanging out with Dave the Geek, Nuri, the FNG. And then uh, also we're here with Dr. Hook, Jeremiah from DailyDetroit.com. And then Randy decided to show back up. So hey, he's running a show over there. Oh, oh, good job, Randy. Good job. <laughs> uh, Way to make people feel valued, Bob. Randy yeah. and the Tudors Walkers. Doing work and things. <laughs> In the house, doing the Twitters. We appreciate it because if you didn't do it, none of us would. <laughs> find, us, find us online at the truth. ITInTheD.com and give us a like on the socials and subscribe to us everywhere. Find podcasts or sold. Yeah, and don't forget to check out the Meet tab. We got all kinds of stuff going on. Like I said, we got the free podcast day thing Saturday. We got the Ann Arbor event Tuesday, the uh, uh, podcaster meetup Thursday. The IT that he casual the Thursday after that. So much for doing my three month drinking hiatus in the beginning of the year. Sorry, not sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah. We started booking ourselves. We start. We got cons booked. We're going to be at Astronomicon. We're going to be at Great Lakes Comic Con. We're going to when it comes around. Oh, uh, we'll, uh, that's dude. May. We, it's in May. We're already getting <laughs> requests. Yeah, I've already had people hit me up asking me if we're doing the party again this year. Nice. Can I feel like I have to go to one of the ops meetings? Like if the ops meetings would stop happening on days that I have to be here for shit, that'd be great. Because I really want to just lob, just give us a ballroom, just just give us a ballroom, make us the official after party, and be done with it. <laughs> I, I will. Try it's not as that. fun if it's a ballroom, though, <laughs> that, is it? That may come with some additional cork. We'll talk about it. We'll talk okay. about this. Yeah. I don't oh, think that's right. Because it's yeah. Party. I don't think it's it's fun. Yeah, true. As long as we're in the big suite, that's all that matters. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. But just, just try being your Facebook friend when you're making all of those events all at once and you just happen to be on Facebook at that time. <laughs> Sorry. And then all of a sudden it's ding, just like ding, I, ding, I, ding. I, I, I did kind I, of I, 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 I looked at my Facebook. I literally had like 40 notifications. <laughs> and it was all your events. Because I realized it was December 29th and I had not put any of our events out yet. It's even yep. better, I'm a co-host, so I got all the things. <laughs> <laughs> so he got the notification plus the notification that he was made a co-host. <laughs> So, Jerry, how'd you ring in uh, 2018? Were you – did you go downtown to the little uh, thing they do? I did not. I had uh, some uh, <laughs> colleagues that did and they really enjoyed it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the big the, the big D drop. That was it, the D drop. The, the D drop. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. <laughs> it moved from Campus Martius to Beacon Park. It did. So what's – like why? Like I heard conflicting what's, where's stories Beacon, about Where's that? Beacon Park? So Beacon Park is the new uh, it's the DTE open area thing. park. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's done Got by it. DTE and it's called Beacon Park because there's a big old light. That goes up into the sky that you can a see at all times. Beacon, if you were. Yes, a beacon, Ooh, if you will. Well, like, but when it opened, DVD. like the pyramid in Vegas. Yeah, right. yeah. Wow. But yeah. I was disappointed when it opened because I misread the press release. I was really hoping for Bacon Park. <laughs> I, I would know, like, like a bunch, we all. A bunch of bacon is the way to go here. Then why don't you have a bacon cart in Beacon Park? Ooh, Beacon Bacon? Yeah. Staffed by a guy in a Beaker costume. Oh, Beaker's named Bernie. Bacon. Named Bernie. <laughs> Bernie's Beaker Bacon in Beacon. Right. In Beacon. <laughs> Damn, I can't believe I said that. All right. I know people from DT Energy are listening. One Fun in this particular. idea. One in particular. Make, make this happen. <laughs> no one has a bacon cart. Beaker's Bacon at Beacon. That'd be great. Bacon right, you could oh. do like this, like bacon and wraps. You could do all yeah. kinds of things. People would love it. I think of Bad Brad's Barbecue. Well, more bees. Right? Jesus Christ. Up in, up in Lake Orion, and they do something called uh, pig candy. That's the best. Oh, that's is, the best. Oh, my yeah. God. The strips of bacon and sugar. Oh, and it's oh, amazing. Ooh, and corn, it's oh, and corn dog batter that. Oh. oh. And put it on a stick. Hashtag put it on a stick. Uh, oh. <laughs> anyway, you went to Beacon Park. And then yep. you can serve drinks in beakers. Oh. And you can have that's no. <laughs> Or have babes to serve your, beakers, your bourbon beakers, beakers. Babes at right. Bacon 
Three we have a, this episode of IT and the D is brought to you by the letter B. <laughs> <laughs> As always, brought to you by the letters W, T, and F. Is there a gong in the studio? <laughs> right. <laughs> My Myers Briggs type is OMFG. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So uh, D drop because so it moved Y. Uh, well, they needed a, a more open area because camp. So Campus Martius and Cadillac Square. Uh, there's space there, but the event just keeps growing and growing. Beacon Park is actually so it's not enough that they blocked off Woodward. To annoy the hell out of the rest well, of the Well, but you also now. have the new um, Winter in the D market or the Detroit and Winter market that uh, right. Bedrock's doing. That has taken up all of Cadillac Square. True. And it's really taken up uh, Capitol Park. And that's something that's been a crazy success. Go figure. You put nice stores downtown and people actually go shop there. I heard it's super nice. It looks – I mean it looks cool. I've driven by. I never got to well, stop. But oh, you were, it's, it's, you were it, mad they weren't beer tents. I was. There are, well, there are beer tents. <laughs> well, no, because I thought each one was an individual like a table and you could reserve them and you get like food and drink like in a, like a glass atrium. They do that on rooftops. Don't look at me like that, Randy. They uh, – <laughs> They do those on like rooftops. Um, who was there once? It was like igloos, like all glass yeah. igloos on rooftops in like the winter. You don't have to wear a jacket and you get like a uh, beer and drinks and food and, oh, on wow. the, on, you know, on the roof. I think that's a great idea for yeah. next year. Um, they're extending the mar- market actually all the way to the 28th because it's been so popular. And then they're actually now talking about just keeping it around and making it a, like going to a spring market because there's been so much demand from people wanting to come downtown, wanting to shop. And one of the problems with downtown Detroit is a lot of the buildings are have been augmented, designed otherwise so that there isn't really retail space. Right. Right? Because for so long, buildings in Detroit were fortresses or reconfigured to be fortresses or built terribly like the Rensen right. to be a fortress. Um, so it wasn't very walkable. So they did this thing and they put in what I like to call human terrariums where they're like little glass buildings that – um I have retail shops in them, and it's been a huge hit. Uh, we've done multiple interviews with business owners, not just what like the bedrock people say, but they like <coughs> lots of small uh, business owners have found a lot of success along it. What type of uh, who's down there? Is it people that have uh, brick and mortar somewhere else that are this is like a little pop up, or is it pop ups, or is it a combo? It's definitely a combo, um, and they've done a good job of actually reaching into the neighborhoods too. So one of uh, my colleague Cheyenne's favorite businesses is called Decreated Boutique. It's like a baby clothes boutique based okay. on. It's like right next to the Bucharest on Livernoy. Okay, and you know she's been able, she was she's had to take days off from selling because she's had to make so much new stuff. She's blown through ev- all of her inventory because it's just been the hotness. It's d- done really well. So I guess my question with that though, well, I'll let you. I'll let you finish talking. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Ask your question. Well, no. So I mean, is is that high demand going to stay there? Would be my question. Like I can see the Christmas season, people going down, everybody going downtown for events, that kind of stuff. Like, is 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 that demand going to stay there high enough for it to be a permanent kind of thing? Well, I think maybe you adjust the the mix of businesses that are in there, right? Um, and things like there's a Christmas, there was a Christmas tree stand that you could buy Christmas trees in Capitol Park. Okay, because it actually went across multiple parks. So I'd feel like you would have to uh, recalibrate your businesses for maybe something that isn't so Christmassy, something that's more of like going out and having fun. You know, you you just buy different things in spring. Maybe it'll be spring to summer, more uh, drinking establishments, things right. like that. Because as much as we all do like drinking in winter, um, drinking outside in winter sucks, especially this year. Uh yeah yeah it's a little chilly opening yeah. day this is, yeah case in point now imagine doing that in the winter it snows no. every day yeah opening no day. yeah exactly yeah. yeah uh but there's just it's really turning into a destination and really at the end of the day that's what's going to bring the money in so it, it's it, that's just one of the many things that have been happening that uh I think things are starting to really turn a corner at least in some areas nice. I For see sure. like Shinola Hotel. Yeah, like it's coming together so quick. Yeah, the Hudson's Tower. Like, it's uh, it's well, be you know, they broke real. ground on uh the Gilbert Monument. Hudson's, yeah, yeah, that'll 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 be a thing. Oh yeah, it will be. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Tower of Gilbertistan. Yeah, exactly. What's that tower shaped like? Uh, a schwanz. <laughs> it's it's absolutely a schwanz. It's it, there's no it's, <laughs> it's it's there's no other way of looking at it. It's a schwanz. The glass schwanz. It's it is. It's a giant glass schwanz. Super. <laughs> Wonder, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, no, so what else has been going on around town? Uh, so you'll laugh at this. They're extending queue line hours so you can so – You can wait for 25 minutes for your queue line when you can walk there quicker. Wait, when does well, it Well, that work? was our experience. When does it close again? Experience. Wait, when does it close again? Well, before it was uh, 11, uh, 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock depending on the night if it wasn't a game night. Okay. And now they're taking it like 
to midnight and later and things like that. But they still need to work through some of their service and frequency issues. The uh, uh, in December, Nuri and I went down for a couple of drink skis and then uh, ended up over to Little Caesars uh, No Smoking Arena. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, we got tickets to the queue line because it's like, oh, it's snowing and we'll just take the queue line. And I've never great. been on the queue line before. So this is like an important thing. Right. I Instagramed my queue line ticket. The rite of passage, yeah. Right. 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 It was a little bromantic. It was good, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, it was snowing uh, that night. You had some snowflakes in your eyelashes. It was very nice. <laughs> you were really nice. I mean, you, you held my hand so sweetly. Um, and we're like, we're sitting there for like 15 minutes and it never showed up. And we end up like, all right, well, let's just walk it. So we walked from the first queue line stop and we made it all the way to Little Caesars Arena before we even saw a queue line coming the other way. Wow. And it's like, this is when you're supposed to be working. And then was that on a game day? Winter. Yeah. On a game day. Wow. See that's and this is why you fail. How well, much did you spend on that again? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, that, I guess that's what gets so frustrating is because there's so many things I do love. We all love, right? About Detroit. Nobody's yeah. sitting here saying Detroit's terrible, but we also need to like make sure that we step up the game a little bit. So, Are like, you listening, Metro Slimes and and Douche Line. Seriously? No one is saying Detroit is terrible. No one. Right. No one. <laughs> what I think I heard you say was Detroit is terrible. Right. <laughs> They've re-edited it together. Rook, Detroit rook, is rook. terrible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's going to get shaft. Hello, children. <laughs> Detroit is terrible. <laughs> uh, but over the weekend, I went to Ann Arbor and visited the historic – I hadn't had the chance yet. I'm really excited to visit the historic Michigan Theater built in 1928. Okay. And as we all know, many of the movie palaces in Detroit got demolished. Yep. And yeah, it's only like one left if I recall correctly. Maybe two. Well, the, there's the United Artists Theater and no one knows what condition it's actually in that they're right. talking about rehabbing as part of the Illich development. Uh, but they're being very cagey about whether yeah. or not they're going to do it. Um, but the Michigan Theater was beautiful. It's been re- restored and rehabbed. First run movie theater right downtown. And I mean, I know that we have Cinema Detroit and things like that. But one of the things that really struck me is that we need to do a much better job of making sure everything's actually near each other. Right in 2018, we need to do a much better job of who's like we, oh. who's we, Jer. We, we argue about this all the time. Right? Who's we, Jer? I mean, just us who do. You mean like, Gilbert Nillich? <laughs> right. <laughs> and Duggan. Don't forget. Don't forget Duggan. <laughs> Puggo Duggo. Yeah, does, yeah. does it really matter? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. It, I, it, you know, I've said it once. I've said it a million times. Like when I talk to my friends back east, I'm like, you know, Detroit. You know, Metro Detroit has all the same cool shit that Boston, Manhattan, DC do. You're just gonna drive. To get there, I mean that's that's reality one hundred and one. Like you're you're gonna go, you know, you're gonna dr- drive twenty minutes to get here, and then you're gonna hang for a while, and then you'll go ten minutes to get there, and then you know, or Uber, whatever, you know. But it's it's not it it's not like it is elsewhere. Well, and that's one of the things I think that if we really want to get to the next level as a city, we've got to turn it from like the periods of a night where it's like this happened. Period. Get in the car. Go this to yep. being commas where it's like I just walked out of the movie theater. And I went and got coffee and then went and saw some stores. And it was all within like mm-hmm. walking distance. And no wonder places like Corktown and Midtown like are covered by national outlets. Cause here there's so much of the media strom, which is like, Oh no, they just don't want to cover, you know, certain areas. No, those other areas just don't have the basics of like, if you're a tourist coming into town, you are not going to go to one place and then go 20 minutes to another yeah. place. You are going to go to a place where you can hop around and be. So Let's be honest. The only thing walkable right now is Greek Town. Cork Town's well, not walkable. It's slowly getting there. It really ah. is. Cork Town's slowly getting there. Well, you can go from Thai to the distillery, basically, right? That's well. You and can, then you got the you Artifactory, and then the LJ's, House, and then Gaelic Mercury League. Bar, you got Detroit Wine, and then Motor, Motor City Wine. Motor City Wine. Yeah, all right. So it's, so expa- it's, it's starting there. to. It's yeah. starting to. Uh, but yeah, we need to have those kind of things because it just makes it. I mean, that's what a city is about. Yeah. You know, if you're going to do a city and have things together, then have them all the way together. Uh, we need to just, I think the other thing about 2018 to think about is just holding ourselves to higher standards and just demanding better. Cause we get, we, you know, especially as like, a, so I'm like, uh, two city residents here in the room, but it's more of like, we, it is on us, not you guys. Like it's, it's, yes, of course, everyone's input is welcome and should be part of it, but it's on, on us, like as city residents to demand that our schools don't suck. And it's on us 
because we're the ones electing these folks mm-hmm. that, you know, council members don't get, you know, embroiled in um, towing schemes. And like – yeah. We've got to really take ownership, or of you that. know, remember to pay their taxes, or you know, <laughs> or, or wear queen's crowns in meetings. Uh, I miss something, or get bribed for sausages. <laughs> remember that one? That's like something we'd be guilty of. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but it's about just demanding better in 2018. That we as Detroiters deserve an amazing city, and we have all the things to get there. We just have to make sure that we. Demand it. I deserve to have my goddamn street plowed. Exactly. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, dude. I meant to ask. I wanted because you know this is like this is your first winter there. At this that is house? my second. So, yeah. We had considerably more snow already this year than yeah. we did all of. So I was, was going to ask how that's all going. The roads are a goddamn shit show. It's it's a disgrace, actually. And you live in a pretty nice neighborhood. I live in like one of the three or four affluent neighborhoods in Detroit, and we have two streets plowed. We have uh, Curtis and we have Parkside. That's so let me they ask count you. emergency routes plowed as plowed, which I don't think they should do with their data points. Neri, let me ask you a question. At yeah, what point me. do you like team up with like three of your neighbors and buy like an ATV or like a – like well, We already do. We have like – we have a, a neighborhood association fee that's not required. But that goes into limited plowing and uh, uh, limited security. Right. But yeah, in my opinion, it's the city's job. No, but I'm job. saying like grabbing like a $2,500 $20, $20, $20, ATV and a little or plow. Just, you know, three guys with big ass snowblowers right. just plowing down the road. Right. I mean, that's what I do the in Detroit my neighborhood. Detroit snowblower gang. No. Oh, oh, shit. Shit. <laughs> Did this just happen? Somebody, no, no, no. You got to up, up the ante. You got to do wall, You got to do Home Depot carts and two propane heaters. And you just melt all that shit. I, my friend Rev has a flamethrower. There you go. There oh, you go. Shit. Yeah. Didn't they sell those in Madison Heights for a while too? And Troy, yeah. There oh. were two places that were done them here locally. They still do. <laughs> all right, check Google right now or GoDaddy. <laughs> Detroit Snowblower Gang. <laughs> there's the Detroit Blower Gang, but that's a totally different thing. <laughs> that's that's yeah, different that, thing. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That's that stripper. <laughs> paint? There's oh they yeah, when they change the paint colors, they have to strip the paint. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah yeah. yeah, and then you then you blow to make sure the paint's dry. Right, 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 right. So what else you got? Um, well, you know, we've got a couple of uh, in the uh, self selfish plugs, but also connected to the network department. Mm-hmm. We have two of our shows now. Our second season of the Daily Detroit Happy Hour is started. We've actually got a great panel on uh, medical marijuana and everything that's going on in that business. It's actually going up uh, tomorrow or the next day. Cool. Which is a really interesting yeah, topic. Yeah, we didn't touch on that because apparently like everywhere – because California just legalized it. Yep. Go California. Um, yes. Yeah, right? And, so and apparently like lines around the block <laughs> everywhere <laughs> at every dispensary ever. Of course. It's California. Right. Uh, and then of course we've got our Daily Detroit News Bite. We're actually doing our daily show. Cool. So that's been something that's been you know surprisingly successful. So uh, just different ways to like reach out to people because – what we've learned is is that like Facebook's terrible for getting news, and if we want to actually reach people, um, yes, we can reach a lot of people through Facebook. But if you want to have like a more serious conversation, we're starting private Facebook groups for members and things like that. Just because we need to have better discourse in Detroit if we want to push the conversation forward. Um, although I do appreciate the uh, puns and uh, inappropriate jokes. <laughs> That's what we're here for. Absolutely. <laughs> So, all right. So uh, where do we find all things Daily Detroit? All things Daily Detroit are at dailydetroit.com. Cool. Or all things. So you should register that. Just just all things. Added. All things Daily Detroit. All things. Yeah. All things Daily Detroit. <laughs> well, well, then there's what, what all things Detroit. Huh? There you go. You know what I, you know what I want to – If I register it, then I'm in trouble. You know what I, right. you know what I want to talk about? One of the stupidest uh, – I like talking about bars and restaurants. And all right. Like let's talk about it. Closings. And, uh, well, I was, dude, I was going to say, remember, remember, remember when we went and saw Kevin Smith? Yeah, and like there were no bars open. Except oh yeah, the park bar. there was same with this. Yeah. Nothing. I had the worst pizza I've ever had, including Bowling Alley Pizza when oh, I was twelve Jesus, years old at Ark Sterling. God. It was okay, the so- worst pizza, instant stomach ache. It looked like I've, I make Totino's ninety nine cent Frozen's better than this, and it's the worst pizza I've ever had in my life. All right. It there. used to be Pub Rub, and now it's not. You figured out where it is. Oh, that place. Yeah. And it had, like, AstroTurf wallpaper. It's a very bizarre place. That place is just like a that, – this is a place over by uh, Grand Circus Park, so people get an idea of where it is. 
Um, that place has just had like a success succession of fail. Like it just never like no matter like what that, it is. Uh, the crows. What what's down the street? The rusted crow. Yeah, it's a phenomenal place. No, I know, but I'm saying the place. And this the, place the spot you're talking about has had closed. like the rumble was. Terrible. Oh, oh yeah, it was closed. But was closed. It was. Uh, well, what night were you guys going? It's the night we went to the WWE thing. That was so Saturday was like, night. Yeah. What? Wow. Yeah, that's the other thing. Like going out, it's like the places need to be open for people to go to them, and consistent hours. That's crazy yeah. talk. <laughs> Well, when you only open on game days, don't expect you to, to succeed on non game days, especially when you're not open. I don't care if you're you're little. If you create a, if you're always open, be always open. Well, and right? because then then you're a destination. Yeah. Because like, if I go down on a non game day and you're not open, I'm never coming back. No. Well, that's why we need. It's that simple. Well, that's why. We why need... should I give you my business right? So much of downtown's um, entertainment and just life culture is all based around those games. And if we and if I don't think downtowns come back until the point where we have things going on when it's not game day. Well, that would be a nice pub crawl. Would be you know would have been it was Park Bar, Cliff Bells, um, Park, Park. Park, 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 Park Bar, Park Bar, um, Park Bar. The ro- I can't ever call it Rusted the, Crow. Rusted Crow, and uh, going to I'm not even want to say their name. They, the pizza made me so sick. Eh, it was but then there's the Brass wine Rail. bar at Bricks if you had like a date with you or something. Right, but if that would be a great pub crawl, but they're never open. Right. Well, and you can't schedule a pub crawl for a game day because then they're flooded and you're not getting in. Right. And and yeah. No. Dumb. Well, I think this is one of the reasons with things like the winter market and things like that. um, The bedrock real estate people have done – have been very particular about you need to be open and you need to be open. Every day you say you're going to be open. And if you're not open, we will kick you out. Nice. And I think that's been part of the success for that – uh, winter in Detroit market is that you go down there and you know you're going to get a good experience. And so it I, turns I, people off when they go there and it's not. Well, it's like, oh, dude, yeah. like I said, if I go down on it, like if I'm just walking around and you're closed, I'm not coming back. It's, it's that simple. I will, like, like we're, I, I'm annoyed at Rusted Crow now because we were there and, you know, we walked by and they weren't open. I, uh, you know, I'm, and there's a bunch and then of then you go on there in game day and they're so swamped that the service is so slow and they're all, and then you're pop- annoyed because right. it's, yeah. Because it's an hour to get a table, and then right. it's an hour to get your food, and it, yeah, yeah, dumb. And so, how do we how do we fix this? Open. So you think it's just on the businesses? Yeah, they need to be open, and you believe people- have a limited have a have a skeleton crew. You can get by <coughs> very well on a normal night on a skeleton crew, and not break the bank. Right. I know labor costs are the date the break the back of every restaurant. But you can get by with a skeleton crew. You know, maybe even, you go even limited. If you go limited menu. Limited menu. At yeah, like, yeah. You know, at nine o'clock. Charcuterie. You, you know, right. After nine, here's our menu on non game days. It's charcuterie and yeah. some deep fried shit. So, right. So you got one person back there, and you got a bartender and a bar back or whatever. No, I agree because we have to have those places open because that w- that's what makes it reliably fun, right? If we want people to come downtown for more than just a game day, if we want people to come down. For more things than just go to the restaurant and then go back to Lake Orion or whatever. Mm-hmm. We have to create these uh, – you know, I, I'm not going to use the word curated because they shouldn't be curated. The experiences. If, you want, if you're going to fall in love with a place, you actually have to be able to do it and be able to go out there and but do it's, things. But it's only the ones around the stadium that do it. It's kind of funny. You go into Midtown, they're all open. Yep. You go to Greektown, uh-huh. they're open. But it's those those ones right around that Adams Circle. Well, that's crazy. And I, They I, never open. And, you know, 10 years ago, I think I could have understood that. Maybe. Not really, but still maybe. But there's so many more residents in the But you the got city Fillmore now. flow out. Now you have LCA flow out. You got mm-hmm. Fox flow out. Well, you like, have like three or 4,000 new residents right there on that mm-hmm. on that park. Mm-hmm. Hey, God, we were talking about those condos. That, yeah, that we, I, that we were – we've been talking about buying for 20 years yeah. when they were worth nothing. And never did because we're dumb. It's all yeah, right. and then now it would be worth those, a lot. Those are our Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> that was my serious stock in 2009. Right. <laughs> no, but that's on them, though. So you, you know what? I spend my money elsewhere. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. No, but I'll be, most people won't. But that, it sucks. You, I, I can't be the only one that say it, that, that you know, I walk out of the Fillmore and I want to hang out and I can't when you without, can. getting in, without getting in an Uber 
and going midtown or minutes, downtown. Yeah. Right. And you, you should be able to do that because that's what you do in major cities. That's what I want to do. Right. That's why I didn't cry when the palace left my backyard because I don't, I don't care. It's all about going out for the night and having it's an experience. Yeah. It's not about the game. No, exactly. Grown man for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I mean, you know, getting back to, you know, I don't, you know, New York, Boston, D.C., you walk out of a stadium, everything's there. Yeah. Everything. And, and they're all open and they're all waiting. And, and then even if there's not a game, they're all open. They're all there. Because, it, it, yeah, it just, it kills me. And if you build it right, people will come, as shown by, you know, the places in Corktown, the places that do well, that bring all the reviewers in, the winter in Detroit market again, the... If you build it midtown, things in midtown. If you build it the right way, people will come and spend their money. They don't want. They don't want a janky experience. I want to spend my money. That's how bad it is. Like I can't. Right. Exactly. And and we should work every way to get those tax dollars and get that extra spending money in. And those are all jobs that people can do. And it just blows my mind. And it's frustrated me for years, but it really is frustrating now. Because we're supposed to be on this comeback role, but our ent- entertainment scene just still isn't doing what it should be yet. But then you you know you go to Greek Town and you go to Wahlburgers that just open up in all the Meyer stores around town, right? Which is, which is, I don't, which is one of the probably. I don't want to say it's a dumb move because you know I like the whole Meyer thing, you know, Michigan born, but like, boy, that's 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 pretty low. That's, I wonder if it's like jumping the shark, like it's too much. It just destroyed <laughs> it. Um, yeah, great. You get to open up in how many Myers, but I'll be, uh, you know, I'm not eating a wall burger at a Meyer. I barely ate at a Subway at Meyer. <laughs> like I'm gonna eat a bit. Yeah, f- honestly, like I, I, like if I'd walk into Meyer and I was gonna go shopping and I realized I was hungry, yeah, I'll I'll stop and hit the Subway just to keep myself from over shopping. The whole point is you just bought groceries though. Either yeah, you're not doing it on the way in, you're doing it on the way out. No, I always did it on the way in. Oh, because I w- I would realize oh yeah hey I'm about to go shopping and right. I'm hungry but you know what and that leads to over shopping right but if you look at if you suffering. look at all the Meyer banks though the Meyer changes banks in the in the store every yeah. three months but but speaking of Meyer I have a bone to pick thank you I'm, for, thank you for clarifying that <laughs> <laughs> that Meyer I used to think that that, that Meyer, Meyer the one at eight mile on eight mile okay all right our Meyer basically yeah. yeah was the complaints were overrated. I used to think, oh, well, it's just a busy Saturday. These people on the internet, they're just complaining. And then I become a regular shopper of that Meyer, <laughs> moving six miles, no, four miles from Midtown to the University District. What a flaming bag of show that place is. Oh, yeah. Whether it is the rotting tomatoes, the... Flies I found in my sourdough bread. Yeah. The TSA like waiting lines. Oh, that's oh, that's always the worst. A huge line. Never, always. never, never try to buy booze at this place because they will have you sit and wait while they try to find somebody to ID you, like some manager to ID you. Oh, I was there. New Year's Eve, 8 o'clock, trying to buy stuff to go to a party at Calvin Moore's house. Uh, shout out to Calvin. Uh, and Good. there were four lanes open. Yes. Four, four checkout cashiers, 8 o'clock on New Year's Eve. The self-checkout lane was wrapped around back the whole length of the produce and then around again. Yeah. The lanes. Wow. <laughs> the, one time I went a couple days ago. It wasn't New Year's Eve, but a few days ago. And there were five lanes open. All the other lanes were dark. And these lanes went to the back of the store. Go ahead. Like all the way to the back of the store because – and it was slow and it was – it's just like what are the – I don't know what they're doing. Why are there 31 checkout lanes? Right. I, dude, they're I've, never going to have I've, 31 open. I have never seen – so like I used to go – when we were in Ferndale, I, I, that's the store that I would stop at to buy shit for the studio. <laughs> I never saw more than four or five lanes open ever at all no matter what, whether I was there at – Two in the afternoon, six o'clock at night, ten o'clock at if night. If you guys went to the Meyer by my house on Hamlin and Adams, it would be you would be like in your you would be in heaven. Oh, I've been there. It's that so, store is a weird layout, though. It's so easy to get in and out of, though. Dude, the two by my house. Well, I've been, I've are, been to are, them. Piece of cake. I've yeah. been to them in other places, and it is a piece of cake. I I was very excited, but now we're I mean we're literally giving tax incentive dollars to Meyer to now open another Meyer down in uh, Lafayette Park over by Jefferson. 
is this the kind of mire we're going to get? Like, it, and everyone's excited about, oh, it's a chain store, blah, blah, blah. As somebody who's lived in the city for a long time and not had to have and live perfectly fine without a mire, like, I'm not so excited. My my favorite experience, I guess, in the last year was it was right around Thanksgiving. And there's that one wine that they sell at Thanksgiving. It's the Beaujolais Nouveau, Nouveau yeah. by George DeBoeuf, right? It's like, it's everywhere. Everywhere yep. has it. And I would go up to the guy. I'm like, hey, I'm looking for a, a special. And he's, he's working in the beer section. I'm like, hey, I'm looking to find that uh, one Thanksgiving wine that everybody drinks, you know, the Beaujolais. Yeah. And he's like, the wine's over there. And he points at the wall. I'm like, mother effer, I just came from that <laughs> effing section. <laughs> And the amount of I don't give a shit is just so high at that store. And I don't know what the problem is. I, I remember asking uh, – they're out of a vegetable. I'm like, do you have any more of those in the back? And he's like, I don't know. And then he walks away. And that's the kind of bullshit that I've wow. had at that mire. Yeah, I don't know if it's – I don't know if it's the same way at the Grand – I've never been to the uh, Grand River Mire in the city. I don't know if this is a city mire problem. Well, I, I don't know like what it is. One up, in, up in Lake Oregon near where Jess lives, it, it is a boss ass mire. And then there's one out in Skia or Skyo on the west side of Ann Arbor. Skyo. Skyo. Go eat, eat it anyway. Um, <laughs> go, go eat a thing from Meyer that's not quite right. But Eggplant. it's also amazing. And that's on the west side of Ann Arbor, which is not really like fancy Ann Arbor place. Yeah. And it's it's also a really great store. Dude, so, the one in Fraser. Freight, man, friggin' phenomenal. They got uh, the one that's like three miles away from it on like gross back in 17. Friggin' phenomenal. My advice to you guys, you shipped. So I ask you, what is wrong with a Detroit Meyer? Actually, I'd be curious to know what would happen if it's, you use shipped. It's dollar Long Islands on. Uh, I mean, I used to use shipped all the time in Midtown. It was no, great. if you mark that they give you bad produce, like those those drivers, like that, that's their you know they're counting on this as side money. Yeah, I'd be curious to I'd be curious to know how it goes. By with me, you. it's all Oakland U students. Yeah, so it's like, and they're all you know, it's great. Yeah, um, but like yeah, they give you rotten tomatoes. You can put produce was bad, and do they get trashed? They get yeah. like, they lose their you know they could lose their ship uh, whatever. Well, yeah. I found well, I think it's like Uber. I think if you rate them like two stars or less, you'll never get that person again. Yeah. Well, the uh, mi- when I was in Midtown, I used shipped all the time and it actually worked pretty well. So it, it's kind of funny that I moved closer to Meyer to be able to get there very qu- and I'm able to get there very quickly myself. The experience was much better. When so I had the moral else you know, you know the help the dark side and just don't ever leave your house. You know what the help does before work probably gets gets two of them dollar uh, Long Islands, uh, right? <laughs> and then stumbles into work. Yeah, that's, I'm sure that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see? Uh, Nick Britsky that does Nick drinks yeah. cheap plug for Facebook. He's like does all craft cocktails, really high end. Uh-huh. You know, he does real. He's good at what he does. Um, he went and raided the Dollar Long Islands <laughs> Did from, he? from Applebee's, that. and it was like he actually like commended them and said it wasn't like it wasn't too sweet. It was actually pretty not bad. Like, <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> right. good for Nick. Exactly. <laughs> hey, uh, let's. Uh, what do you think? We will wrap this up. Yeah, it's been the first episode of 2018. Hope uh, you had a good time. We had a great time. On behalf of uh, Bob and Dave and Nuri and Randy and Jer, do us all a favor. And oh my god, I just did meat because we just did a meatball episode. You were about to do the yeah. Hey, and I wanted to give a you know shout out to Credit Karma. Don't forget to hit creditkarma.com. dot com. Check out your credit scores. Like yeah. Bob never does. Thanks to Robin <laughs> Tino from It's Lit. Uh, do us all a favor. Drink up your drinks. Get your phone numbers. You don't gotta go home. You just gotta get the hell out of here. See you next week. Drive careful. Beat it. The emergency destruct system is now activated. Conan, what is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of the women. Long live Flash. You've saved your ass. Have a nice day. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Nice shooting, son. What's your name? Murphy. Make the run. The run. The run. Game over, man. Game over. It's over, Johnny. It's over. Nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. I just, I can't say no, and I don't really want to, so. Well, especially with the back doors open. Yo! Hold up! a chill. You need to cool that shit out. And that's the double truth. Rue. Bob loves it in the can. I hope this was as much fun for you as it was for me. Mm. That's why I like it in the can. Joe, on the cheese. Oh, 
Fear me. <laughs> My job is to make sure this program is morally upright and cultural and wholesome. Shut up, Mimsy! Shut up, Mimsy! Shut up, Mimsy! Why would, like, Buick put their cars next to, like, the Bentleys? Like, why? That's not marketing. Um, the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I can't take that position. That analogy yeah. sucks because it's right. Because you're getting your 8-track tuned up. <laughs> Are we at a break yet? <laughs> Yeah, so now I'm just, like, doing, like, stupid stuff to make me laugh. Venture capital is not the end game. When are we going to talk about me? Jane, you ignorant slut. It's my show. I can say what I want. Kiss my ass. (laughs) Go home. (laughs) Unplug. (laughs) Get off the goddamn internet. You are everything that is wrong with the internet right now. You're so white right now. (laughs) I'm the whitest guy in the room. Just explain it to me. Show now. I love this city. I was banging on the wang. Really? Should we talk about this? Yeah, Tag team. Should I keep going or should I stop? Can I just say, it's been great being on a show that talks about Mickey Rooney dying for 20 seconds and then poop for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs>